Anyway, if you're hungry and you know, and there's a there's a steak with some you know mashed potatoes like from Ruby Tuesdays that's really nice. You know what I'm saying? All that stuff in there, and you have broccoli and vegetables and all that good stuff. And you're hungry. You know, you just like you worked out, and you just like your mouth is just dry and everything. And they have nice drinks for you, healthy drinks. You know, like lemonade. Pink lemonade, raspberry lemonade, <laughs> and all that stuff. Make it clear. And they have that before you. And what you go is running after the two crumbs mm -hmm. at the front door mm -hmm. that a couple of roaches had a little start on. Mm -hmm. That's literally what it's like mm -hmm. running after the world's economy mm -hmm. when God has all this set for you. Mm -hmm. I just want to make it very clear. Now I'm hoping oh you get the point God. today. Yeah. Yeah. But let me go into it, go into it here. It's going to be a little bit today to share. It might be a series here again. But let me give you a definition of economy according to the world. Okay? The message today, for those who want to know, is the power source of an economy leads to its worship. The power source of an economy leads to its worship. Okay? All right, that's what God, that's what God gave me, okay? So economy is defined as... The result of a set of processes, I'm going to school here, that involves culture. It involves the values of that culture, the education system of that culture, technological evolution, how technology transforms, history, and this is a big one, the social organization of that culture. That's really a big part of that economy, mm -hmm. okay? The political structure, legal systems, and even natural resources, as well as the ecology. That, those things together make a culture, make, a, make an economy. And look at that. In that list, not one thing on there called money. Because money, as we see, is a result of all of these things. Money is not the culture. Money is an afterbirth, so to speak, of what an what economy is about. The biggest thing that sets an economy is what they value. Say that again, Pastor. The biggest thing that, that, that sets an economy is what they value in that social structure. Amen. You see what I'm saying? Yes, sir. All right. Now, in other words, now, now make it plain for you all. In other words, an economy is a social domain of human practices and transactions. So in other words, an economy's root is relationship and what they relate to. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's what the source of an economy is. All right. Now, there's another kind of economy, which is what the world is kind of going into. It's called a command-based economy. And that economy is where political agents, they control what is produced and how it's sold and how it's distributed. Mm -hmm. Which means that, you know, this, whatever the social and political structure decides, another word for that is called elitists. Okay, you know, the high end of a culture. Whatever they feel is right for people or wrong for people is what's determined by the, for the whole economy. And God, you know, we saw structure of that in, <clears throat> in Germany. We've seen some place like that in Africa. We see places like that in, you know, in the Middle East and things like that, where it's a command base, where we command. You have no say at all in what we are commanding. So you just have to listen to us or you die. Or out, be outcasts. That's what literally the economy is leading to in this culture right now that we have today. So we're going to stand here. Let's give you, this just, I'm just giving definition. I ain't even got into the message. <laughs> Look at this here. Look at this. Like the earliest economies pretty much way back like in 3000 BC and what we can really recognize by history. Because I like to study history. We gotta understand, you know, where these things come from so we're not like wondering what's happening with us today, mm -hmm. okay? In the earliest 
economies recorded, the people exchanged goods based on their social relationships. You know, Dr. Scott, I like you, you're a wonderful person. You know, I have a house full of what? Something, you know, I have a house full of what? Art, I guess. And you have a house full of food. Mm -hmm. So we're, since we're buddies, can I give you some art? And then maybe you can give me some of your food. Mm -hmm. And you know, like that's what it was about. So it's all about a social structure, mm -hmm. you see? And what happens is, the so what people possess is what people valued. You have, to va you have to put value on, like, if my house has art in it, I mean, there's a value that she has on that that allows me to give that to her so she give me something that she values. Okay? And God he speaks to me, well, what made, what made art have value? Oh, man. What made that have value? What on earth made that have value <laughs> while you can exchange it for somebody? <laughs> you see? And the simple word that God gave me was called idolatry. Because what God showed me in this whole thing is that a person or a thing that is greatly admired or revered is what has become the value system yes. of every yes. economy. Exactly. Y'all with me on this? Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. So look at this here. Let me give you more history. In ancient Turkey, okay, this is like 2,700 years ago before Christ, all right, somebody came up with using metal coins. So coins were like the first type of indication of economy, all right? The first coins appeared in ancient Turkey, all right? Everybody loved the idea, all right? And the coins were stamped with a value and a worth on it, okay? And, they, and the big part about it, they could be decorated with pictures or designs. You see that? All right. Now, this is where they get something, okay? In ancient Greece, coins were believed to have magical powers. And the reason why they were believed to have magical powers is because they had images of their gods and their goddesses on the coins. So what happened, like I said, what made the art have value? The value of the art is what people worshipped. Mm -hmm. They worshipped their gods, and they got Zeus and Athena, and yeah. you know, the whole list goes on, all that kind of stuff. So when they put an image of that that someone concocted, that brought value to something which helped people to have a greater economy. Because mm -hmm. they traded based on what they worshipped. Mm -hmm. You see that? Mm -hmm. You're following this today? Yeah. It's not a typical Sunday morning message, but it's something to help us get some background of what is happening in the world today. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So look at this here. Even look at the presidents mm. of the United States of America. Oh, don't talk about them. <laughs> Let me tell you, does anybody know why we have do, does anybody know why we have presidents on money? Come on. Does anybody know why? Because they are revered. Okay. Like we said. They are revered or admired or worshipped. The same pattern. Shut up. America follows Greco-Roman tradition. Yep, that's true. You see what I'm saying? They worship gods. Yeah. They worship the gods, but gods on the identities of what's called money. And in America, we put precedence on what we consider something of value. So gods, presidents, people worship presidents. You can even see how people worship presidents by presidential elections in the last few years. Ancestor worship. Okay? Ancestor worship, yes. Mm -hmm. So let me just give you a little background, okay? Presidents were chosen by the Secretary of the Treasury. And what happened was, this is what's so important for me, okay? When was the Great Depression? 1920s. 1920s, 1930s, right? In that area. Well, Look at this. Understand this. The Treasury decided to put presidents on money during the Great Depression. Whoa. 1929. Understand what I'm saying here today. A culture, a civilization 
The world was in a dump. America was in a dump. People were in bread lines. So let's do this. Let's put people we worship on some paper, and maybe the economy will get better. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 1929 is when they decided, the Treasury decided, mm -hmm. to put the portraits of presidents on money mm -hmm. as a lucky charm. Add value. Mm -hmm. To add value mm -hmm. in situations like that. They will use presidents most familiar, most revered by Americans. Okay, like Benjamin Franklin, mm -hmm. Hamilton, Samuel Chase, yeah. you know. <clears throat> and even those guys were involved. I mean, there's, there's so much involved. There is so much, there, nothing is of face value in this country. Nothing. Nothing is of face value. You can overlook it and, and hop around and, and jump around and run circles around. It's fine, you can do that. You'll sweat and you get some energy. But if you really want to understand, <laughs> You might lose an ounce or two, something like that. Keep running. Keep running. Be healthy. But what happens is you have to understand the foundation of the economy that we're in today. You see, it's idol worship. Point blank, all right? God says to them, this is what God tells me, all right? An economy has a mark and a mark of control. Here's some words God gave me. Whoever controls the money, God says, controls the economy. Mm -hmm. God said that to me that power on earth is proliferated by national and personal bank accounts. We're going to go into some of those today. All right? As yes, ma'am, Pastor Chante, go ahead. <laughs> I'm getting my starter on here. Just to add a historical caveat to that, one of the Rothschilds said, mm -hmm. give me control over a nation's money, and I care not who is over the people. And she got my notes out there. She, you peeked at my notes today. Hallelujah. Amen. That's just confirmation. She just jumped. She just jumped. She, got, she fast forward. a little praise God. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And this is what God spoke to me, so we understand something. As the times get more perilous, mm -hmm. the finances to control peril will increase. In a nutshell, God showed me today that what happens is we see things coming into law because the people with the money and their social structures that they like are invading the, the, uh, the political and the legal systems, and now the money is shifting into their hands, and now their hands are controlling the laws. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what happens is we have to realize that this, the whole base of these new laws is based on a social structure of today. Men are getting more wicked every day. Yes. Not just men, men and women, and even children are getting more wicked. Yeah. And they are getting into positions of wealth. They are getting into positions of control, which means that what they desire in their social makeup and what they value in their makeup is now becoming law across the land. Mm -hmm. You follow me on that? Yeah, that so that's what we got to deal with here, all right? Okay, money and economy comes from merchandising. The source of merchandising, the offer for sale, or the buying of allegiances, originated in heaven by the iniquity of one. The whole essence of trading and merchandising started from iniquity in heaven. So.